If you're trying to move your Express.js app or Node.js app from Heroku to Back4 app, this is the video for you. I'm Alex, the architect from Back4 app, and I'll guide you through this process. So the first thing you want to do is to create a free Back4 app account. It's totally free and all you have to provide is your email address. Once you log in to back app, you end up in this screen that we call the back app dashboard. In here, I have many apps because I have an old account with multiple apps and yours will look similar to this with fewer apps. In order to create your first app, you have to click this build new app button here. I'm going to skip this for now and give it a good name. So I'm going to call this my express app. Hit create. And this takes a couple of seconds while we deploy your uh, application through all the application servers and your database through all the database servers. So if any server stops responding, other ones will handle this traffic and your application will keep up online. Now that our app was created, there are a few settings that we have to do. And the first one is to deploy our first website so we can see it when we enable the web host. We do that by going to cloud code. And here we have two folders, the cloud folder, which contains the cloud code, which is the dynamic serverless functions for back for app and the public folder, which ho holds static files. And in here you'll find a index file for example, and all you have to do is to click deploy. So this file is uploaded to the servers and it will be able to be accessed once we set up our domain. Now that it was deployed, all we have to do is go to App Settings, Server Settings, scroll down to Web Hosting and Custom Domains, click Settings, and in here we have to activate back for app hosting so we can have a domain to access our app. back for app will suggest a subdomain name for you, but it might be already taken by another user. So it might not work for you from the first guess. Uh, you can change this as much as you need until you find one that works for you. The uh, domain will be b4a.app and if you have your own domain and you want to point to this domain, all you have to do is to enter your custom domain here and click this plus button. I'm going to try with my express app. I don't think any user has used this before. So what I'm going to do is to click save. And now my domain is saved and I can test it in another tab. So myexpressapp.b4a.app. If you see this screen, your index file was published and your domain is working and we can proceed to our next steps. So back to my parse dashboard, we're going to go back to the cloud code section and in here we're going to write the code of our Express or Node.js app in back for app. So there are a few files that you have to create for this. We have this main.js file which is aimed to have the cloud code or the, or the uh, serverless uh, smart functions for back for app and in order to create express app uh, an express app uh, code you have to create a new file so i'm going to select the, the cloud file folder click new file and type app.js click create file the file must be named app.js because parse will look for this file specifically and inside here i can start writing my own code so I'm going to write a very simple code in here, app.get, and I'm going to get the slash. This will get a function with a request and response. And inside here, I'm going to put send hello world. If I deploy this, and go back to my website in here and try to refresh, you see that my website was changed to hello world. So right now I can just copy and paste all my Express.js code, paste it into back for app and try to run and see which functions will work and which ones will not. But let's get a little bit more advanced. So in here I have the app.js and I'm going to 
remove this code and create a new one that will handle a different route. So I'm going to do, do slash Alex instead of only the slash, and this will send hello Alex. I'm going to deploy this one once again. And back here, if I just reload this, you'll see the old HTML file that parse will load as default. So if I refresh, there we go. But if I put slash Alex instead, you'll see hello Alex. And you, we, you can create folder structures in here as well. So let's change this a little bit. Instead of just returning hello Alex, we're going to change this to res send file because I'm going to send a HTML file for when you hit the slash Alex subdomain. And in here, we're going to add uh, our path, which will be slash views slash index to.html and you have to provide a root uh, for this because the paths must be uh, static so root two underlines and their name and this should be good to go I'm going to deploy this and in here in my cloud folder I'm going to right click and click create folder I'm going to right click the new folder click rename and click and name it views remember the views is what we called our uh, first uh, part of the index2.html file portion so it will look for this folder as well and inside here I have some HTML uh, code that I'm going to create so I'm going to right click the views let me deploy the fo folder first all the actions you have to deploy uh, so it takes action on all the servers so create folder rename views new file inside views we're going to call this index 2html create file and I have some uh, HTML code into my clipboard that I will just paste in here Click deploy. And there you go. Now, every time I hit the slash Alex, it will uh, send the file that is contained in the views folder and index 2html file, which is already in there. So if I come here and refresh, there you go, you have a much more beautiful hello world function. And if you just remove the Alex, you see the uh, regular index HTML file that is written by default. And remember, you can always change this file as well and add other static files in here and all folder structures that you need. So if you have CSS files, JS files, uh, HTML files, image files, you can all drop, drop into the public folder in any folder structure that you want and it will just work. But back to our uh, Express or Node.js, if you need, sometimes you want to use uh, NPM modules as well, and you can do that as well in Backfrap. To do that, we have to create a new file inside the cloud folder. So I'm going to select the cloud folder, click new file. And in here, we have to name this file package.json. Click create file. And all the NPM modules and versions that I specify in here will be automatically downloaded and installed for me. There is a specific format that we must follow, so it starts with uh, brackets. And in here we'll write dependencies, which is a property, a JSON property, so once again brackets. And inside here we are going to list all our uh, modules and its versions. So for instance, I want to use the body parser module in the version uh, that I might need. In this case, you have two options. You can write a number in here as a string and it will download that specific one. Or if you want to use only the latest one, all I have to do is put a asterisk in there and your uh, parser will identify this as the latest version and download and install it for me. So. With that done, all I have to do is click deploy once again. 
And from now on, from all my JS files, I can import the body parsers and it, the body parser and it will just work. So what I recommend for you, all of you trying to move your Express.js or Node.js apps from Heroku to Back 4 App is to start slowly. First, deploy your website into the cloud code section, this one here, just by clicking deploy in a new app. Then set up your uh, web hosting domain so you can access that website and start by, uh, by moving your functions one by one from uh, your code repository or from directly from Heroku to uh, back for app and see if those uh, functions work. Once again, back for app works with NPM modules, so you can uh, be sure it will work if you use those modules. And if you have uh, calls to third party services, perhaps you call an API somewhere, or perhaps you consume some uh, GraphQL or um, databases uh, outside of back for app, it will just work. Just remember, sometimes you have to open uh, firewall rules to allow access from back for app into your servers, but uh, you are covered with most use cases. And remember, if you need assistance when doing these kinds of migrations, you can always rely on our support team. We have the chat button in our uh, website. All you have to do is to click chat, it will open a ticket and someone from our support team will get, uh, support team will get in touch with you and assist with your migration. So, if you found this video helpful, please click the like button and consider subscribing to the channel so you can help us grow. Also, share this link with a friend and they can learn something too. If you're already subscribed, thank you for that. And if you have any questions, suggestions, or any implementation you'd like to see, please leave it on the comment section down below. We always answer all the questions. I hope this content was useful to you and I hope to see you as a back for app user soon. See you soon. Bye bye.